Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Is everybody getting ready for the snow? Yeah? All right. Well, it's wonderful to have you in worship with us, whether you're here and present or if you are watching on our live stream. Just a couple things to remind you of that we do have uh, handouts that have all of our lyric sheets uh, that you can use, or if you would like to go paper free, you can actually pull them up from our website, so be aware of that. Also want to just remind everybody we're starting a new sermon series next week that has a Bible study that goes with it, a daily devotion, and also life groups. And so we're asking you to perfectly think about the ways that you can um, participate and uh, join with us in that. Um, reminder, as always, that if you're watching on the live stream, you can submit your prayer requests in the comment section throughout the service all the way through time of offering. And then those will be uh, given to us and we'll include those in prayers. And then those who are in person will take verbal prayer requests uh, at that time as well. And then finally, if you are watching uh, one of our, li our live stream on Facebook, we'd really encourage you to share your video with all your friends. Uh, we'll see if um, what we share today might be a blessing to them as well. I think that's it for our announcements. Why don't we stand to prepare our hearts with our first hymn. gather for worship remembering the name into which we were baptized that which calls us together in fellowship with him and one another the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen let's take a moment to uh, come to god to confess our sins all those things uh, that we have failed to do all the things that we have done that uh, do not follow his will all the burdens of our heart we bring to him at this time Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for another opportunity to gather here to worship you, to receive your gifts. We come before you, seeking your mercy and grace, for we fail so desperately each and every day. We give in to the, the fears, the temptations, uh, even the unbelief of our heart. We pray, Lord, that as we uh, come before your throne of mercy, you would forgive us, because we come confidently knowing that you will answer because of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. This we ask in his name. Amen. The great joy of the gospel is this, that because God sent his son into the world to rescue and to redeem each and every one of us from the powers of sin, death, and the devil, this he did by his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. So it's my joy to remind you that again this morning that you are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's thank him for that forgiveness with our next song.
You may be seated once again. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you have allowed us once again to gather, to um, hear your, of your great mercy, to receive your gifts as we think about the, the praise that your people have offered up throughout the ages. We join them in praising again together uh, this morning. We pray that you would bless our time together, that your word uh, would be powerful among us, that your spirit would lead us in trusting that word that comes to us and celebrating the gifts that you give. All this we pray in your son's name. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today from, comes from Joshua chapter 6, beginning verse 15. On the seventh day they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest shouted the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destructions by taking any of them. Otherwise you will make the camp of Israel liable to the destruction and bring trouble upon it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are scattered to the Lord, are sacred to the Lord, and must go into his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Our two New Testament reading comes from Revelation chapter 5, beginning at verse 6. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The Lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God sent out until the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea, on, under the earth and on the sea, and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. This time we'd like to uh, invite forward all of our children 
Pam First has a special message for them this morning, so come on up. It's still a little wet up here, so you might not want to sit, but maybe you'll want to squat. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Good. Are you sure? <laughs> Helen's good. I don't know about the rest of you. Anybody celebrating a birthday? That's right. Katie Ann will be turning 11 on Tuesday. Happy birthday. Campbell. That's right. Campbell will be turning 52. Campbell will be turning nine on Saturday. Happy birthday. And your dad, Brad, will have a birthday on Friday, too. Lots of September birthdays. Jessica, happy birthday. You just had a birthday. And you have one coming up, too, don't you, over there? Happy birthday, Katie. Lots of September birthdays. Anybody else? I don't want to leave anybody out. OK, we have another Sunday. OK, great. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to start our children's message with the book Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. How many of you read this book before? Great, so we should all have a good idea what's it, what it's about. Somebody want to um, share just to make sure we're all on the same page. What happens in the book Green Eggs and Ham? Campbell. That's right. Sam I am is trying to convince this guy that he should eat green eggs and ham. And this guy wants nothing to do with them and goes on and on and on about all the places and all the reasons and why he's not going to eat green eggs and ham. Until Sam I am finally wears him down and he tries green eggs and ham. And what does he think of green eggs and ham when he tries it? They're delicious. He loves them, right? He loves them so much. He wants to eat them anywhere and everywhere, all different kinds of ways, all different kinds of um, celebrations eating green eggs and ham, right? He wants to sing the praises of green eggs and ham. So I'm not gonna read the whole book, but I am gonna read that part because it's a favorite of mine. So here we go. This guy's just figured out how much he likes green eggs and ham. I like green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam I am. And I would eat them in a boat. And I would eat them with a goat. And I will eat them in the rain and in the dark and on a train and in a car and in a tree. They are so, so good, you see. So I will eat them in a box and I will eat them with a fox. I will eat them in a house and I will eat them with a mouse. I will eat them here and there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you. Thank you, Sam I am. So one of the reasons this is my favorite part of the book is because it reminds me of Psalm 150, which is what we're going to hear as soon as you guys go sit down, and it's what pastor is going to preach about today. In Psalm, Psalm 150, it's all about praising God. It's how we should praise him, why we should praise him, where we should praise him. So let me ask you guys, why do you praise God? Yeah, that's a pretty good reason, right? He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us to take away our sins so we might have eternal life with him? Yeah. Juliet? Yeah, he's an a pretty amazing God. He has made everything around us, right? The grass, the sky, the flowers, the trees. What? The pickers? The pickers? Okay. Um, he made us. He made all the animals. He is an amazing God, a, capable of doing anything, right? And for that, we give our thanks and praise. Now, where do you praise God? Where, but where do you most often praise God? Church, Sunday morning, right now, we're praising God, right? We just sang a song, we've been praying, we're gathering together to worship Him. Yeah. Is there anywhere else that you praise God 
regularly. Home. Maybe at night when you're saying your prayers before bed, do you praise God then? Thank him for everything he's done? Sure. But I think we have an opportunity here. I think we have an opportunity to learn from Dr. Seuss and to learn um, from green eggs and ham specifically. We have so much to be thankful for. And not only that, it gives us an opportunity to be reminded how great our God is and how we can trust him with any and all of our problems. So what if we took a lesson out of green eggs and ham and we decided I will praise God in the rain and in the dark and on a train. I'll praise God in a car and in a tree because he is so good, so good you see. I will praise God in a box and I will praise God with a fox. I will praise God in a house and I will praise God with a mouse. I will praise God here and I will praise God there. Say, I will praise God anywhere. Right? We're not limited to church or bedtime to praise God. Really, we should be um, thinking about it and giving him our praises everywhere. So that's my challenge to you this week. I want you to spend some time praising God in a place or in a way you don't normally do. Okay? So if you're playing outside in a tree or maybe if you're playing on, in the snow on Tuesday, we'll see. Um, take a minute. Praise him. Let him know how much you love him and how thankful you are for everything he's done for you. Can you guys do that for me? All right, great. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for dying on the cross to save us from our sins. Thank you for creating everything around us. Thank you for giving us voices so that we may praise you and let you know how grateful and thankful and wonderful you are. Watch over our children as we go out into the week. Keep our families safe. And we look forward to meeting next Sunday to praise you again. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. And be sure to listen to Psalm 150 when you get back to your seats. reading for today that is the basis of uh, Pastor PJ's message is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with a trumpet sound. Praise him with a lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud, crashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We please stand as we continue with our next song. This is my prayer in my hunger and need. 
Amen. You may be seated. Our message today is based on the psalm you heard earlier, Psalm 150. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you today. We bring you praise with our hearts, with our voices, with our instruments. We join all the Christians around the world this morning, lifting up our songs of praise. For you are worthy, and you are worthy because of who you are and what you have done. We pray that we would see this every day, even in the midst of chaotic times as we are in that our eyes would always see you with perfect vision and empower us to lives of praise. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to need some... Oh, we do? Wow. It's always interesting to see how many people come in after <laughs> we'll get going. Oh, this is great to see so many people here on Labor Day weekend, too. That's really cool. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to actually participate. Can you guys participate with me today? I'm going to need your help. So, all right, I got like three hands. All right, that's pretty good. Um, so every time I say hallelujah, you're going to say, what do you think you're going to say? Praise the Lord. That's right. Hallelujah means what? Praise the Lord. All right. So <laughs> I know if you're still waking up today, all right, you're going to have to Really put some effort into it, okay? Let's try it. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Wow, okay, that was pretty good. Can you do even louder? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. That was really good. Oh, wow. Very impressive. All right, so that's what we're talking about today, isn't it? It's a Psalm 150. Did you guys catch that? That it's talking about praising the Lord? The first uh, 10 times it said praise the Lord. It's kind of, it's like, it's trying to tell me something. I know it. So, what's, God, what are you trying to, yeah. Sometimes scripture is really clear and that's really nice, right? It tells us exactly what to do. There's no really other way to interpret. And so actually we're finishing our sermon series on Psalms. And so we, we hope you've uh, been able to look at the Psalms and, and pray over them and meditate on them. Uh, is there meant to be a prayer book and a hymn book for us, an expression of not only our difficulties, but our uh, trust in God during difficult times. And so we hope that uh, this has been good for you to learn how to not only express your emotions to God, but also express your trust to Him in all circumstances. And so our last uh, sermon, sermon of the series is on praise the Lord. That's a fitting way to end because it is also the last psalm of the Psalter, of the whole book of Psalms. In fact, actually the last five Psalms of the, the Psalms are Psalms of Praise called the Hallelujahs, Hallelujahs. And so uh, it's obviously something that uh, people of God have wanted to stress for a long time as well. And so today we're going to look at this last Psalm. And it's a Psalm that is a Psalm of Hallelujah. Okay, just want to make sure you're listening. All right, so I want to think about who in your life do you praise? You guys praise anybody in your life? Yourself? When you look in the mirror, hey, you look good today. <laughs> you might praise, right, your family members, maybe? Maybe your kids, significant other? Dog, oh, I didn't even think about dog, of course. You praise your dog, yeah. Animals, you might praise... Maybe uh, athletes, they seem to get a lot of praise, right? I just You just turn on Sports Center and the highlight reel comes on and all, it's all the great plays that they've done in the last game and they're just singing their praises and how great they are. And um, Then there's the people who make it to the Hall of Fame, right? Those are the really good athletes. Those are the ones that are remembered. So even years and years after uh, they've done something, People will still be talking about them, still singing their praise. I was uh, going through this uh, series on Netflix called The Last Dance. Anybody? Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Man, I, all right, so it's pretty good. It's about Michael Jordan, right? Okay, you guys know Michael Jordan. 
And it's about his second three-peat, so his, <laughs> his sixth championship that he won with the Chicago Bulls in 1998. So it's talking about his last championship run. But so that even though this happened in 1998, people are still talking about it. Every time they see him, they're still oh man, he's so good, right? You can't just help but see this guy and talk about how good he was because of all these things that he's accomplished. And then there's those people maybe uh, throughout history, those great leaders that uh, we see a picture of them and we just, uh, we want to praise them. Oh yeah, that's, I know who that is. Yeah, he did, you know, wow, he was president during World War II. Oh, that's incredible, you know. There's Roosevelt, there's Winston Churchill, there's Martin Luther, wow. And it goes back and back. You can even think about um, maybe some of the emperors during the Roman Empire and uh, these past great leaders. So even hundreds and hundreds of years uh, because they've made such a great impact, people still remember what they've done. But I think uh, today, when people that we praise often... Uh, it's uh, they're not really that. It's not really that amazing, you know. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, you did something good or you accomplished something. It was pretty nice, you know. But in the grand scheme of things, when we compare it to what God has done, it doesn't even come close, right? And we often uh, get caught up in the praise of lesser beings, lesser people, don't we? Can you imagine how much praise the person is going to get who uh, comes up with a cure for the coronavirus? Right? That's going to be pretty impressive. People are going to go nuts. But yet God has already done something far greater than that. And so that's why we say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. What has God done? It simply says because of his mighty deeds and excellent greatness. That's all that's required. God's mighty deeds. What is some of the mighty deeds he's done for us? We shout them out? Creation, yeah. Jesus, of course, doesn't, right? Anybody watch the sun come up? Anybody up that early? Every day, he does it. Every day, he uh, takes care of all, every living thing, the Psalms say. He gives them their food at their proper time. They look to him. He opens their hand and gives them what they need. He's not only that. You can just kind of go through the Apostles' Creed, actually. It talks about he's the creator. It talks about he's the redeemer and Jesus, what he's done for us on the cross and giving us forgiveness. I mean, can we ever get really tired of hearing that, that we have forgiveness and eternal life because of what God has done for us? Something that lasts forever. Uh, so much greater than a championship, right? Or something nice that a friend or family member did for us. This is what Jesus has done is something that has an ongoing effect in our lives. Because of what he's done, we know that he walks with us today. His presence is with us because sin no longer separates us from him. And so he's, not, he's with us through all of our trials. We know he loves us because of what he's done for us and sacrificing his own life for us. And so we know that uh, he's greater and stronger than anything that's going to come at us. And you think about uh, the last article of the Apostles' Creed, and the, his, the sanctifier, right? He's the one who is out there. He's uh, renewed, literally, uh, it says, recreated your heart to want to praise him, to see him as he is, as your Lord and Savior, to walk with him and to do what is pleasing in, in your life to him. And he's out there and he's still transforming people. He's freeing them from sins. He's freeing them from uh, sometimes physical ailments, sometimes emotional problems. Sometimes uh, he brings reconciliation. Every it says every good thing that's happening in our world is because of God at work today. And when you think about all that stuff, you can't help but want to praise God because of how great he is. And so if we put the same effort into as much as we talk about our athletes, if you think about as much as the culture does, we put that same effort into watching God's highlight reel 
over and over again, we would be uncontainable with how much praise we would have, wouldn't we? When we just sit and we look at what God has done, we can't help but express hallelujah. That's right. Here's what it says in Revelation 5. It says, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. Maybe some of the biggest stadiums have 100,000 people, so this is way, way more than that. All the heavenly hosts of angels are there. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders, and in a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then it says, Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever who else can you say that about anybody else anybody else out there worthy of praise forever and ever no i, mean, I don't think i am i mean i'm kind of close but uh, you think no okay just make it i just had to make sure okay um, every creature in heaven and on earth uh, the Psalms say let everything that has breath praise the Lord who else can you say that about who else can you say that about who else brings that kind of praise because literally everything that has breath has breath because of the Lord he's literally the one that gave them breath He's the only one that can save them from death, the only one that can renew them, the only one that can provide for them. Now Jericho, in our Old Testament reading, was a strong fortified city, one of the strongest cities uh, that the Israelites were gonna face. And if you think about it, uh, when they first sent spies into the land of Canaan, the two of the spies said, "Look, these people are giants. They're they got chariots. They got strong armies. They um, we look like grasshoppers to them. We don't stand a chance." I'm sorry, ten of them actually, and only two of them said, "Hey, look, God is on our side. We can take out anybody because He says He's going to give us the victory." You see what happens is. If they would have focused on how big the city of Jericho was and its vast strong walls and its strong army and its mighty men, they probably would have gotten afraid, wouldn't they? You see, they were able to march right up to the city and march around it seven times because God had already told them that they were victorious. He had already accomplished. He said, I've given this city into your hands. And so what did they do that caused the walls to collapse? They shouted. They shouted praise to God. And the walls came down. And they conquered the city. It's the same thing in our lives today. One of the most powerful things of saying hallelujah in our lives is that it changes our perspective. Don't you just notice it right now as we're focusing on it? feel confidence and strength building in you as you're looking away from everything in your life God knows what it is you're going through I don't but he knows everything that's going on maybe it's financial problems maybe it's trouble with the family maybe it's marriage maybe it's kids maybe it's someone you know that's having a hard time but we can just focus on all that it can become overwhelming to us but when we focus on who God is, it changes our perspective. There's a thing in the, um, there's a type of therapy in counseling called REBT. And what it actually means is, uh, one of the main teachings of it is that it's not so much the circumstance that happens to us, it's the meaning that we attach to it. It's the interpretation that we give to the events that happen to us that really make the difference in our lives. 
We see if our attitude to the coronavirus is just that, oh, this is terrible, we need to live in fear the rest of our lives, this is just going to be miserable and just hope for it to get done, then that's the attitude that we'll live with. But when we look at God and we see that, oh, God is already victorious over that and he's already our leader and he's promised us a way through it and he's promised us that it's going to be okay no matter what happens and nothing's going to separate us from his love, that changes our attitude. Because now we know that we're not here for ourselves, we're here for God, and so this now becomes the opportunity to serve others, which is really the goal of our lives. Instead of, God, what have you done for me today? God, what can I do for you today? Because I want to live a life of praise and thanks to you. So when we're focusing on God, we're focusing on the top. We're focusing on the most powerful being in the universe. And so it's not like we can ever be then disappointed. We're not going to wake up one day and find that God has changed, that he's really let us down, that he's really broke his promises, that he's really not going to be with us, that he's really turned out to be a phony in the same way that so many other people can disappoint us. One day we'll be singing their praise, and the next day something bad will come out that they've done, and, and we'll just want to run them into the ground. That's not the way it is with God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when we're focusing on him, when we're praising him, saying hallelujah, we know that we're in a solid place. Because it's not like anybody can come against God. It's not like anybody can take him away. It's not like anybody can undo what he has done. That's why we feel empowered and strengthened the more we look on God and praise him. Because you know that nothing is impossible with him. And that's why praise is to be a theme of God's people. We love a God who's already won the victory for us. He's already conquered everything all the brokenness in this world it's all taken care of our salvation it's all taken care of what now is left for us is to live the life of thanksgiving and praise for what he's done the theologian E.W. Tozer said sometimes I go to God and say God if thou dost never answer another prayer while I live on this earth, I will still worship thee as long as I live and in the ages to come for what thou hast done already. God's already put me so far in debt that if I were to live one million millenniums, I couldn't pay him for what he's done to me. That's the impact of what God has done in our lives. So I encourage you to bring that praise to the brokenness and to the suffering in your life. It doesn't deny that it's there, but it rather simply changes the way you look at it and your attitude. I remember when I was living in Minnesota in my parents' room as my dad was suffering uh, with Parkinson's, as he still is, uh, but it was just a room where there's so much pain and there was uh, so much frustration, so much illness. And yet there was a big banner in there that said, Praise the Lord. And it seems so strange. But yet it was also so good. That this is how we go into battle against the brokenness in our lives. We go on praising the Lord. Because he's already given us the victory and he's already promised to be with us. And it's the only thing that can get us through. And to get us through with the most meaning and purpose and joy. So maybe you heard that line from our, our uh, song for our message. Let me say it again to you. All of my life in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen.
for generations, God's people have used uh, the creeds to confess the wonderful deeds that he has done. So why don't we stand and join together confessing our trust and belief in the deeds of God and the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated once again. I want to share with you this week's uh, generosity moment. Uh, one of the things Summit has been doing is that on our fifth Sundays that happen during the year, we give 15% uh, of our offerings back to um, a community partner that uh, helps us spread the love and peace of our Lord. And so uh, this past Sunday, at the end of August, um, our partner was Orphan Grain Train, and so we are be sending them a gift of $625 because of your generosity uh, last Sunday. Uh, during our time of offering, just to remind you that if you brought an offering with you, you can come up and place it here in the basket. Uh, and whether you're watching on live stream or here in person, you also can uh, get on our website and give in that way.
As we go to the Lord in prayer today, are there any special requests from uh, those who are with us this morning in person? Pray for Pastor Borkhart and family. Any others? Any others? Then let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise again this day. We remember your marvelous and wonderful deeds for us, chief among them the sending of your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to rescue and to redeem each of us. We pray, Lord, that uh, your praise would ever be on our lips, wherever it is that you lead us, whatever it is that we're doing, wherever it is that we go. We pray that that praise would be uh, on our lips, even in the, the times of struggle and trial and tribulation, that, we, that your spirit would lead us to remember all of your wonderful works and deeds that you have done. This day, Lord, we especially lift up um, our prayer families. We pray for, that you would be with the Klinsmans, the Cleves, the Kennedys, and Kellys. We pray that you would be with our uh, sister church, Grace Lutheran and Hudson, and also a partner in the community, Sweet Dream in the Bag, as they seek to share the love that you have given upon, given to each of us with those in need. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with um, those who are ill, who are struggling with um, ailments of, of soul and, and body. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them. We especially remember the Borkharts, uh, who uh, many of the family members have uh, COVID. We ask for their uh, healing and protection for those uh, family members who um, that they would not uh, contract it. We ask that you be with uh, a friend of Earl's who is um, in hospice. We ask that you would grant him uh, peace during this time. Uh, on behalf of Sandy, we give you thanks for um, the, the worship and praise we are able to bring to you this day. On behalf of Erica, for Christie and family uh, who are burying Dean this past weekend, Lord, we ask the comfort of the resurrection would be theirs. We ask, Lord, that you would be, uh, on behalf of Denise, to be with Brother Al, uh, who's also in hospice at home, prayers for his wife, daughters, grandchildren, as, um, as he goes through what appear to be his final days, Lord, we ask that your peace uh, be with him as well. On behalf of Bob, um, of Bob for daughter-in-law, uh, whose procedure last Thursday revealed that her cancer had returned to her brain, Lord, we ask that um, you continue to be with the doctors and nurses, that, uh, that your healing and peace will be brought to all of them. On behalf of Marcia for Vicki, um, uh, the lump she's having removed from her ovary on Wednesday would be benign. On behalf of Becky, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for all God has given us, especially our lives and salvation. Continued prayers are with those medical issues. On behalf of Jane, for those who are experiencing homelessness as we face our first snowstorm of the year. 
on behalf of Miriam for Susan as she struggles with stage four lung cancer. We also give you thanks, praise Lord for answering prayers for um, for recovery and health for us. We pray that that would continue, um, and we give you thanks and praise for the ways that you have been with them to this point. These prayers, Lord, and the others of our heart, we bring to you, trusting in you, for we know not only will you hear, but you answer. For we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psst. Just a reminder, as uh, we, uh, if you haven't been with communion in person here, um, we have some communion assistants who will pass out our um, uh, communion. It's individually uh, wrapped with uh, both the host and um, the wine. Um, on each side we have gluten-free if you need it. We have alcohol-free if you need it uh, as well, so just make sure to indicate that. Uh, after it is all passed out, um, then we'll actually take and eat it together when I say take and eat, and we'll uh, drink it together when I say take and drink. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he is betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in the remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. And take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior, shed for the forgiveness of all your sin. Savior, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Please stand to receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. so much. Katie, will you actually share with us everyone who uh, volunteered or using their gifts leading sure. us today? That was really sure. awesome. Wasn't it great? You guys can have a seat, but yeah, tell us who's uh, serving us today. So we have Corbin on violin, Dan on cello, and Molly on violin, and we have Harumi at the piano, and Jonathan on bass, and Kinsey, and Katie. <laughs> so, awesome. Thank you for them uh, sharing their gift with us today. It was awesome. We pray today was been a uh, blessing and encouragement to you. Some things we want to share with you in the life of our congregation. 